guys know I have this other mini little porch out here. It's kind of small, but you know, I gotta do some rearranging out here and I don't know guys, it's really small. Definitely want to kind of maybe switch this out with something else. So it just kind of looks better, a little more open in some way. Not exactly sure because it's such a small porch, but I would love to redo it at some point and just make it look a lot more modern. I'm loving these pillows I've made. So these are obviously staying, but I don't really care for the cushion situation. I might just take that off to be honest. So I literally just took it off just to see, and I think it looks so much better already with like the neutral colors. So I might just leave it this way. Oh hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are gonna be creating these really cute twine balls that you can pop onto any regular schmegular mini lights and create your own little twine ball twinkle light moment. You can hang them outdoors or inside, whatever. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is obviously twine. I picked up this big giant pack of it at a garage sale type situation. I only paid $2.50 for all of this. <laughs> Such a steal, right? I didn't particularly like the color, so that's why I wanted to do this project. The next thing that you're gonna need, balloons. These are latex balloons. I got a 25 pack from Dollar Tree. You're also gonna need PVA glue, get some Vaseline to rub around the balloon. You're gonna need a tray. We're gonna mix flour, glue, and water together in our tray. You're gonna need some extra string or something of the sort so you're able to hang the balloons from like a broom pole or something. So I just took an old broom pole and I taped it to the backs of my chairs here in the kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and tie the strings and they're gonna just hang and I have a towel with some newspaper down below because this will get messy and drip. It's probably recommended to do this project outdoors if possible. It's too hot out to be doing this for me, so I'm gonna do it inside. <laughs> so the first step is to blow your balloons up and we wanna do them about a four inch, about like, this is a bit too large. You can see here, this is almost five inches. So I'm gonna let some of the air out and this is probably a good size right here. So I'm gonna tie this off and we have a nice little round balloon. Super cute. So I'm gonna do that with all of them. You can see this one's not perfectly round, but that's okay. We can shape it to get more round with the twine. This one was a bit too large. All right, after you got all your balloons blown up, then you're gonna go ahead and tie a little string here. You really wanna make sure that the string is underneath this section, like where the knot of the balloon is. So where I have it is not very good just because as it's hanging, it could possibly, this part might slip through. But if you tie like a couple knots, it should be okay. Instead of tying every little string to the pole, I'm actually just gonna tape it. So then it's easier for me to remove the tape at the end um, for cleanup or if you do tie it on the pole, you can use scissors and cut the string off. But I'm gonna go ahead and start taping all my balloons up here. I want them to stagger a little bit like this, just because when we start to put the product on and it starts to drip, you kind of don't want them to touch. All right, as you can see, I am finished here. Now the next step I'm gonna do is actually gonna be taking that Vaseline that I told you guys we needed. We're gonna take the Vaseline and rub them on the balloons. This way, it'll ensure that the mixture doesn't stick to the balloon. So I'm just taking a little bit of Vaseline and I'm just gonna rub it all over the balloon. Just like that. And we have to do all the balloons here. All right guys, here comes the fun part in our tray. 
our little tray that we have. This is just a little tin, roasting tin I got from Dollar Tree. It comes in a pack of two. I'm taking a little bit of warm water and the PVA glue and the flour. We want our mixture not really runny, but um, we also don't want it super clumpy. That was probably way too much flour that I just added. You can also use cornstarch in replace of the flour, almost creating like a dough. And you can also use Elmer's glue, it's totally fine to mix with this. I just recommend PVA glue, it's gonna hold a lot better than Elmer's glue. So this is kind of how the mixture is gonna look. You can see it looks kind of like pudding type consistency. So we don't want it clumpy, we wanna get any clumps out of there. We want a smooth texture and we want it to be a little thick and not runny. I hope that makes sense, like pudding and I'm going to be mixing this in batches because I know this twine is probably going to absorb a lot of this mixture. It might be easier to cut this and work in smaller sections. I'm going to go ahead and get started because this is just taking too long. Just making sure that my mixture is really coated onto the twine. And as I'm going, I'm going to be pushing the PVA glue down like this. Because it's like, it's coated, I just don't want that much excess dripping off. So I'm going to just push it down. Let's go ahead and start with this pink one here. And you also want to make sure you leave somewhat of a gap as you're wrapping this around the top here. And we're wrapping all different kinds of ways. So that's all we're doing is just wrapping this coated twine around this balloon ball and we're going to create these really beautiful pieces. I'm so excited to get this done. Okay, once I get to where I want, that's when I'll take my scissors and just cut it. And then I'm taking that end of the twine and I'm sticking it so it's on the bottom somewhere like just stick it in there like that that will just tuck it away other than that you'll just let it sit and dry simple as that okay guys i got all of them done i do want to point out just a few little things here just so you guys don't make the same mistake i did so i did end up tying like one end of the string and looping it over and tying it to another so i had two balloons tied to one string and that seems to be holding up pretty well because the string is like over the wooden dowel. But some of them, I did not do that. Like this one right here, it's only on like the one string. And since I didn't tie it onto the pole, it keeps slipping out of the duct tape and falling on the ground. So what I ended up doing was retaping it, but I have a feeling it's gonna keep falling. The ones that I did that way, possibly keep falling just because the string is slipping out of the tape. Oh, I do recommend actually tying the string to the dowel. You can see here this balloon is pulling up, trying to pull up out of our little twine situation. So I think because there's a lot of product that's caked on there, it's really weighing it down. So as I was going, I was trying to pull lots of the product off of the string, as I said in the beginning when I started the first one here. And as I kept going, I noticed I wasn't doing that. You can see here, it's like globbed with product. I don't recommend having lots of product because it's gonna take longer to dry. Not only that, you have a chance of it falling. I'm really hoping that when I come home that they're not all over the floor making a big mess, but you can see there's already like drippage on this towel i'm excited for these to dry i made about 20 yeah 20 of them and i did want to make like some larger ones to do a different different light fixture with two bigger ones but i think i'm going to do that another day just because this did take me about an hour and a half just to twine these up so when i come back to you guys you guys will see them spray painted. I'm gonna spray paint them. Not sure what color yet. All right, it's the next day. These have all dried overnight. So I'm just taking like a little pen and I'm gonna pop the balloon.
and it can get a little messy. So I just pulled the balloon out of there. You can see this specific ball left a giant hole, which honestly is not bad because I can stick the light fixture like thing through that hole. But you can see where the glue and stuff had dried in between all the little cracks. So I have to try to knock all those out with like an X-Acto knife. Now that you guys were all done with these, I moved on to going ahead and spray painting this cord. I do want to point out, I searched high and low for string lights, okay? For some reason, they're so expensive, and I can never find them in the color, the size, and everything I need. So, I opted out for getting a pair of string lights from Five Below. And they have $5 shipping on all orders or whatever size orders, always $5 shipping, which, so I went ahead and like ordered a bunch of stuff and I'll point that out later. What some of the stuff I got for my porch and for my house in general, super cute stuff. So anyways, I got these really nice string lights and I will show you a clip here of what they look like normally. I spray painted them this almond like it's satin ivory silk color i got from menards so the spacing is approximately about seven inches or so from you know one to another which is going to leave me plenty of room when i put my balls put them on there it's going to leave plenty of space for them to hang by each other my order is here i end up getting two of these this was only about 13 or so dollars. I went ahead and ordered it from Home Depot's website and had it shipped to my local Home Depot. I plan on putting the little fence moment like right here. So I'm hoping it looks okay. So I'm gonna show you guys how it looks with it done. So if you're far back, you can't even see that like anyone would be sitting there but you can see it is a bit taller, so I might have to cut it down just a little bit. Then over here, I wasn't too sure how to, if I should put some here. I'm not sure how I would do this since it's at an angle. Not exactly sure about this side, but I obviously want it to tie in with the whole like porch. I wanted to point out, I got these crates. You guys, I'm so excited to show you these. The crates end up being $16, all together for all four of them. So this was all from Gordman's because the store is going out of business. I'm thinking like either painting this smaller one or a medium sized one. So I really wasn't sure which crate to put down here. You can even put your feet up onto the crate. I think I want this, this size of crate right here. The smaller one. I mean, I literally could use both. You guys know what I mean? I could like stack them like that. So I end up choosing the medium sized, I guess the larger size of the two crates and I'm just gonna paint this with white. I end up giving it a couple layers and I didn't fully saturate it as well. I just kind of lightly put this on. So I went ahead and cut this to size and I have like extra over here. I think I'm gonna end up putting on this side right here, but yeah. I'm going to show you guys how I did it I'm over here. All I did was use like some screws and that seemed to just hold it in place. I put one on the bottom and one on the top and I did a set in the middle and a set on that side. But I will have this crate kind of pushed up against it, probably like that. And then this plant will be over here. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how I fence. Super easy. What's this bell? Oh, my gosh. So I just have these little screws. And, you know, all I'm doing is pulling so that the wire is pulled straight out. I wasn't really able to do that with this one 
just because it's so long, I can't like reach my arms and pull like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm just picking just a spot close to the top and that will hold it in place while you grab another screw and do the bottom side right here. Literally that simple and you want to pull it and stretch it and then you probably want to screw into the wire. You want to get as close as possible to getting in into the wire. And the wind shouldn't blow that around. So here is what this little fence moment's looking like. I don't really mind this little post. It kind of gives me beach vibes. You know, like how they have like a, a post. I'm not mad at it at all. I think it looks a lot better than what it did. So this is like the finished. You could obviously cut this more like higher. I don't really mind it like this just because I'll show you from the outside how it looks. From the outside, we obviously don't want to see the top sticking up that looks super cute the way it is it's like the panels are filled in from the outside i don't really know exactly what to do with this because it's at an angle so i'm actually thinking so i think i might move like the hooks that are over here and put them right here so they're actually some hanging pots so we'll do like three hanging pots in between and that will just like fill in this area. Okay, I wanted to show you guys, I end up putting some hangers. I have another hanger that's right here. So another hanging pot could go here. I just think that looks so much better, just like filling it in with something. So I'm not really sure if I'm gonna put this stuff here, but that doesn't look too bad to me. At some point I wanna redo this situation down there. Guys, look how freaking cute my porch is coming along. I added this cute little light up here that I got from Five Below. It was like five bucks, a little solar light. Turns on at night up there in the corner. I wanted to point this out. I noticed Dollar Tree had these glue sticks. They have a five piece pack and they're the thick ones and the long ones. Picked up five packs, which is 25 glue sticks for the amount of $5, which I thought was actually a pretty good deal for this cute boho rug you are going to need five of these dollar tree mats and you're also going to need some natural sisal rope you can get this from walmart or hobby lobby i actually picked up one from each store the one from hobby lobby has my coupon on it and it was about four dollars and the one from walmart was about five something so the first step in this project is to turn our mats on the reverse side the back side we're going to be taping them together with duct tape i used gorilla duct tape once you're done it should look something like this i'm going to zoom out so that you can see how i taped it together okay all right moving on so now we're going to be undoing our sisal rope and we're going to be hot gluing it down. So I measured out where the center point would be. And remember I have that other piece on the end, the other um, mat. So right here where I'm pointing is about the center. My cat is in the way. Hi, Katie. And for this rug, I actually got my inspiration off of Pinterest. So I'm actually just hot gluing this down into like a rainbow shape, I guess. If that's even a shape. But like in the form of a rainbow, that's what we're doing. So you obviously want to make sure you hold down your piece for at least five seconds and then trim off the excess like I'm doing here. And we're just going to repeat this step. Probably, I think I did about six uh, to start with. And then I went ahead and made a squiggly design here and... I added two more arches. So I wanted to show you guys how I'm gonna do that squiggly line. It's really simple. So I started off with six, then I did a squiggly, and then I went ahead and did seven, then another squiggly that's bigger. I'm trying to do two times, you know what I'm saying here? And then I did eight. So there's eight right here. So like as we get bigger, these are going to get, you know, bigger. I wanted to show you how I did this exactly because 
I am ready for the next row. So it needs to be double the size of this, okay? But we first have to start off with this out here. I've just been eyeballing this as well. I just wanted to point that out. So I'm gonna about double this size, about right in here. So I'm gonna about double this size, about right in here. <laughs> on the edge here and now I'm actually going to be showing you how I'm going to make these little circles to place on the outer edge. Very simple, just try not to burn yourself. But the direction that the rope is in is the direction you want to work in. Kind of like bend this in on itself like this. Harden up before touching because this is really hot. Okay, you can see I'm just making basically a little disc. And I'm gonna make a several of these. So I went ahead and I finished out my row and finished all these pieces and I glued them down already. I went ahead and started cutting and I'm cutting at like an angle like this so that when this is all cut out, you won't see any of the black piece like sticking out or anything on the edge. You guys, I was, I cut the little circles out which I think it gives it a nice clean finish on the edge. But as I was looking at this, just because of my design and everything, I think if I cut out all of the black, which I really want to, I think the overall rug will be very flimsy and it may fall apart. And I really don't want to risk all my hard work. So I th I'm kind of just making the decision to maybe leave it really don't want to it looks kind of bad I found this wooden stick and I really want to make a project with it so think about making like a wall hanging situation but I don't want to do your traditional cotton macrame or anything like that so I'm using some of this raffia that I still have from the Dollar Tree I have that left over all right I'm definitely digging this so far <laughs> all I did was open it up so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and tie it tie it onto the stick and then I'm going to cut like a shape at the bottom. And then I got some of these beads from Hobby Lobby. They have them, um, you know, from in the fall section. I'm going to go ahead and use both of the beads. And I'm going to just put some of them like draped across right here. And that'll pretty much be the project. It'll be super simple to put together. So when I'm done with all of this, I'll do it off camera real quick. I'm going to go ahead and hang it up and I'm going to show you guys the reveal of my new porch.
There you guys have it. I hope you enjoyed this quick little simple makeover with a few simple DIYs just to really spruce up my porch. I'm obsessed. It's definitely giving me the boho vibes I wanted. Kind of gives me beach vibes so I can come out here and just chill on my porch and it just feels like I'm somewhere else. Not exactly in a trailer park. I got this cute little lantern and it's still actually does get enough sunlight through my little the reed fence I got from Home Depot. I got this on sale, $6 from Ikea. Loving my rug. It is seriously so cute. Like the little crate and the little pumpkin. I just got this from Walmart for like $6, so that's a steal. Everything turned out really good. I'm sorry though, there's a lot of wind and this stuff just doesn't stay down. And these guys, I think I vaguely touched base with DIY cushions and pillow video. These were some of the pillows I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I had made. All I did was use leftover insulation and I wrapped that insulation, so like house insulation, <laughs> I had leftover in my shed. I cut it up, wrapped it up in some of the plastic, hot glued the plastic that for your windows, you know? It's wrapped up in the plastic, and then over top of the plastic is this material that I got from Menards for like 50 cents or something like that. And I used some twine to do a blanket stitch all the way around. And this creates these really decorative pillows. They look very rustic. And this basket was just a cheap basket from, I think it was from Michaels, honestly. It had sat out outside in the rain, and actually became this really pretty weathered color and some pieces broke off which kind of gave it this really nice rustic look. This is mainly for decorative use. Obviously you're not going to be out here laying down especially in the chairs. And then these pillows I wanted to point out. I actually made these pillows from Dollar Tree mini bath rugs. I had cut them up and re-glued them together and added a little bit of yarn detailing right here. I think these turned out really nice. I just stuffed them with stuffing I had from Hobby Lobby. Here's the other one. And these cute chairs, I actually got these chairs for free from someone that was leaving the mobile home park when I had moved in. And this is a Dollar Tree placemat. I just painted this really pretty soft, green this is mainly for fall because i'm doing this really pretty just different colored scheme for fall i'm not doing your your typical browns and oranges and i want like neutral lighter colors i think that looks really nice here is my poisonous plant and might i add my ferns are doing really well they're super big i'm obsessed let's look at these ones Yeah, they're doing they're pretty doing pretty nice they're not dead <laughs> oh and this thing right here this little light i actually got this from five below it was five dollars it's a solar light it's not working at the moment not sure why but there's a thing on the top where it gets the sun and the light lights up and i thought it would be really cute on the porch 